We, we made it. Two tables. We do. You hear that, guys? Two tables. We <laughs> yeah. made it to Dallas for the. Uh, we are so happy. For the one day stay, so that but we can we go two to. Nights. Two nights, but so that we can go for one day to NARBC. I just want to give you guys a quick room tour. Well, I'll flip you over. I'm gonna try and keep the kids out of the way so Yuki doesn't get mad at us. But there's Kenzie in this little kitchenette space. Basically a small apartment. So we come in here. We've got a little pull-out couch, a little dining table. Let's use it. Got the little TV set and yeah, the stand, table. the couches, and then into the master suite, which we all four of us are gonna, you know, cuddle up. But cool bed, another TV. We have walk-in restroom with a uh, separate sink here. Hello. And then the little privy area. Last thing we gotta do is get a little bit of the view. Wow, look at that. Another hotel. It's not gonna focus. There it is, it took a little bit. Overall, Pretty cool little space for us to hang out for a couple nights. And uh, really excited to see NARBC. Bye. Hey guys, we've made it to NARBC. Come walk around with us. Everybody, I'm Sebastian, and today I'm here with Billy of Reptico Reptiles. I'm just gonna ask him a few questions and uh, talk about how he got into the hobby. So, you want to tell us? Yeah. So, we went to the Orlando show in well, it's been about ten years ago now. Looking for blue tongue skinks. Okay. So we met um, uh, family reptiles out of Florida and my daughter fell in love with ball pythons see so they had no blue tongue skinks at the at the uh re at the reptico they wow. had there the orlando show was totally sold out and then it was the wrong time of year for the hatchlings yeah. so we ended up we ended up not being able to get a blue tongue skink that day there was just adults on just on display so she ended up going over to uh family family reptiles and they had a ball python um 
the the owner, I forget her name now. She had a ball python wrapped around her waist, like a belt. Yeah, I had it like a belt. My daughter loved that, so it's like a fashion for you know four year old kid. So she she takes the ball python, and she's wrapping it all over herself, and she falls in love with it. So we end up buying three at that. Wow, three, bought three right off the bat. That's a heavy, a fast start. Yeah, and and uh, I was already already kind of leaning towards snakes myself. So um, we ended up getting into it. So. That launched rice reptiles and and everything that we've done in the in the ball python industry. Right. Um, just her love for that. Now her passion is geckos and very much hognose. Yeah. The hognose that I'm holding here, we just got from them. They, it is a conda or arctic conda that we're excited to uh, put into our breeding program. Just a quick note, but yeah, that's really cool. So you guys have been breeding for how long? Or you've been in, into this for? We, we got into the hobby about 10 years ago. About We've been breeding probably nine to nine to eight years, really starting out. We started out like everybody else, hobby style, you know, just really, right. really enjoying working with the animals and, and being hobbyists. And then we saw the potential of, of the reptiles and, and, and what it could be as a business as well. Right. So we really invested heavily after that and, and really started as a business and our hobby. So yeah. we love it and it's in our business. That's really awesome. Do you have a favorite type, a favorite morph for ball pythons that? Um, right now, my favorite morph in ball python is lace. And lace is just an enhancer gene. I, I think it's as good as Desert Ghost. And um, we're, we're uh, Desert Ghost, of course, is, a, is the main staple in, in ball pythons right now because it makes everything that we make better. Really? Uh, yeah, it really enhances making everything better. And I think lace is, I think it's as good or better, but it also works with it. So we got two avenues. We can go Desert Ghost, we can go lace, and then we can go Desert Ghost lace. So that's so my favorite really morph. You can really enhance some of the things. We have a lace pod. So that's a visual uh, inchy yellow belly lace pod. It's also 50% head exanthic. We're going, we're going to shed test for that. But it's a whole back male. Probably be a, if we have some, make something better, We'll we'll re we'll release that one, but right now it's the best that we've made in the project. But we've got really nice stuff coming out soon. The 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 lace is really brightening the pattern, so you're getting the inchy and yellow belly what it does, but then the lace brightens it, and lace also affects the pattern a little bit, a little wilder, but very bright. You can definitely. Yeah, that's beautiful. And then the craziness in lace is also when you go to the super form, which is white lace. And that's where it really, really makes us magic and really works well. All the super forms are crazy. The now, super we, form. we really don't know anything about ball pythons because we're, we're mainly into the hognose stuff. So lace so enhances beautiful. and brightens, but it also gives us a, a, a cool belly pattern where you get either white drippings like fire fire going up the belly okay. or you get round white circles and, and round round uh, colored circles on the belly along the sides. Wow, well that's that's really cool. And that yeah. animal specifically is beautiful. Yeah, well, I amazing. appreciate you, you know, talking yeah, to me welcome. today and I appreciate you know you guys having this animal. She's beautiful. Yeah, she's We're she's beautiful. It's a great pickup for you guys. I think I think it'll make amazing stuff and you know that's our that's our daughter's passion now. So Channing's lunch and Reptico and that's another line off of rice reptiles rice reptiles is the canova partner so of course we're we're partnered with with justin kabelka with with rice reptiles and then now my family my wife and daughter are lunch a family business yep a is going awesome. to be the spinoff and it's going to do our geckos and our hognose that's beautiful well, where can everyone find you guys we're on instagram rice reptiles.com Reptico is on Instagram and Facebook, and uh, Reptico will have a really nice interactive site, but it's in the future. It's in the works. Awesome. Thank right, you. Well, I really appreciate you answering some yeah, questions for us, and this animal is going to be awesome. You, you bought the one at the show that I would buy. Awesome. Uh, that on our table, anyway. I don't yeah. know about anywhere else.
Hey guys, we're back with another interview, and right now we are with Emmy from Cold Blooded Cafe, and he's going to tell us the story of the business. So go ahead. Yeah, so we're based out of uh, Indianapolis, Indiana. We're a uh, feeder company. We do rodents, uh, rats, mice, do a bunch of specialty feeders as well. Um, so we pride ourselves in uh, kind of having everything in house. Whatever we don't have in house, we source from uh, quality people. We know how they breed them, how they're raised. Um, so we pretty much just want the best for our customers and their animals. Um, one thing we pride ourselves in is we uh, flash freeze everything. So, so as soon as it goes down, flash freeze it to get the best quality possible um, for your snakes. Because as soon as something goes down, it decays right away. So yeah. we just kind of want what's best for, for snakes and monitors and all that kind of stuff. That's awesome. And you guys do the specials for the show? Yeah, we have a code. Uh, it's a Dallas 20 for 20% off. If you're here at the show, uh, we do free shipping over uh, like orders over a hundred dollars and a free shirt as well um, But yeah, if you follow us on uh, Instagram Facebook uh, And just on our website goldbloodedcafe.com. We run sales all the time So uh, if you don't get to get stuff here just online is is good as well yeah. um, And you guys go to yeah. all the shows, right? Yeah, we try to do a lot of them uh, We do like we're based out of Indianapolis So we a lot of the West Coast ones like Tinley and all that we actually go and take product um, shows that are further out here. Um, it's kind of difficult to drive. We do the marketing down here. part of it. So yeah. yeah, so we do the marketing. We still offer a better sales than if we have stuff in person for that sure. for that reason. Um, but yeah, we do like flat rate shipping uh, all across the U.S. for thirty dollars. So, awesome. All right. Well, you guys, if you want some fresh food for your snakes for whatever eats the rodents, you know, go ahead and order from the Cold Blooded Cafe. I yeah. don't know if, how long that code is going to go, but. I assume you do it at all the shows, all the yeah, the, yeah. It, it changes code. based on on every show. Yeah. Um. But yeah, we, I mean, we we have our uh, feeder business. We have a uh, we keep our own stuff under Reptech. Um. The owner, uh, Desiree Minaj, she has uh, she's under a uh, Miss Monitor. Okay. On Instagram, we have a variety of, of stuff. We don't specialize with one thing. Uh. We're right now we're not even breeding too much. We just have over a hundred species, crocodilians. Wow. Um, uh, monitors, snakes. So, yeah, we have a, a big. So check us, check us out. Oh, perfect. Online, yeah, so. guys, I'll put all their stuff around the screen so you can see it, and we'll move on to the next uh, thing.
All right, everybody, we're back with another Vendor Spotlight. And today we have Shelby from Snakeful Grace. And she's going to tell us how she got started with uh, this hobby of ours. Yeah, so I joined the hobby about three years ago now with my first hog nose. His name's Wilbur. And he's the hoggy that set my heart on fire. If it wasn't for him, I would not own 50 plus reptiles of lots of different species now. Right. So hog nose are definitely my first love that like got me into this hobby. And then with Brendan and Jordan for Snakeful Grace, I joined them about two years ago now. So August will be my two year anniversary with them. That's awesome. So one full year of doing shows, a year full of taking care of hog noses and just falling more and more down the hog nose burrow. <laughs> That's awesome, the hog nose burrow. Awesome. Is, uh, what's your favorite morph of hog Honestly, nose? Is it this guy? Yeah, this guy exactly right here. I am a sucker for super arctics. I love how they have this high white contrast. And they're one of those genes that is a let them cook gene, hands down. Yep. As they age, they start off as chocolatey little babies. And then as they get older, they get more and more of this crispy whiteness serum that makes them absolutely stunning to look at. So they're just breathtaking to me. And I also love their little aberrant head stamp. They're never consistent. It always no. looks like someone took an ink pen and just flopped it right on their head. And I think it looks incredible. Now, do you have a favorite reptile in general that is uh maybe we can exclude the hog noses honestly it's gonna be my gargoyle gecko wow. i am in love with gargoyles i think that they're absolutely incredible new cow species drive my heart insane and i love this high contrast i'm almost like a jack-o-lantern look pretty much anything like high contrast is my bread and butter that's really awesome <laughs> Yeah. Well, if people want to find you, where can we typically find you? You can find me all across the board on any Snakeful Grace platform, or you can also find me on my personal social medias. It's just Giraffe Go Meow. Okay. Super easy and iconic to remember. All right, <laughs> you guys will see that on the screen. Go ahead and follow them, and if you want to uh, come and get a snake from them, or maybe some of the other species, you can find them at probably most shows in Texas. Yep, most shows all over the country. If you go to oh, snakefulgrace.com, it has our expo calendar there, and you can always take a look and see what month and where we're going to be at, pretty much. All right, that's perfect. Well, yeah. if you guys heard it, go find them. Some food. I'm hungry. What about you, Allison? I'm starving. <laughs> I want all this. A lot of water. I'm so around. starved for spending so much money. Yeah. Hey guys, we're back with another vendor spotlight, and today we are with the Bio Dude and Paul. And he's gonna tell us a little bit about the benefits of a bioactive enclosure for the animals. Hi hey guys, uh, my name is Paul. I work with the BioDude. Um, so basically the really good benefits about, you know, having plants in bioactive enclosures is, you know, not only that it's going to benefit the soil and everything, you know, in the bioactive enclosure, but it also benefits the animal itself with enrichment wise. So it's really important to understand that having lots of coverage, lots of, you know, places for them to hide, to foliage, it's really, you know, enriching for the animal itself. Um, you know, lots of people will put in like bare minimum enclosures sometimes, and sometimes they'll be like, that's good. And then all of a sudden, whenever they see like a fully like planted enclosure, they're like, that looks a lot better. And then, you know, from time to time, it's just like, you know, plants, they really bring out the best in like the way enclosures look. Um, as far as like with the, so the soil, um, for bioactive enclosures, it's basically like, you know, everything corresponds with each other. You know, plants, um, they provide nutrients for the soil, ice pods, springtails, cleanup crew, all of that, you know, provides nutrients for plants itself. So everything is like full circle in that, you know, spectrum for having, like, for having plants in there. So 
not only it does it benefit your your soil, but it also benefits the animal itself. Sounds like you kind of get the full life cycle of yeah. their natural environment yeah. with all the plants and stuff. And you guys, you sell isopods and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, we too, actually right? do sell isopods. Um, we have a like a multiple like you know different options for customers and stuff. So usually what it is is you know we have dwarfs, we have powders, you know dairy cows, different right. kinds of species. And so their benefit is to kind of help the plants with their life cycle, from what I understand. So as far as like their kind of um, purpose is for eating decaying matter. Oh, okay, so great. basically with ice pods and spring toes, they'll eat up decaying matter and their droppings will provide the nutrients for the plants. Oh, look at that. Yeah. You get a little bit of nature in your own house. Yeah, exactly. Self-sustaining right. self ecosystem in a terrarium. Yeah. All right, well, where can we find the bio -D? Um, So we're located in Houston, Texas, uh, Webster, Texas, actually, but it's like right, right outside of Houston, so not too far. And the online retailer, you guys have an yeah. online retailer? Yeah, definitely, we're an online retailer. All that stuff, the Instagram, the website. Mm -hmm. I'll yes, go ahead sir. and put that up on the screen for you guys. Yeah. Um, and thanks again for yeah, doing this interview with me, and I hope you guys can put together a really nice enclosure for your animals. Um, all right, thank you. We're about to start. Let's start that bag out at $20. 20 right here, 30 right here, 40 right here, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. BC. 200 BC balls. 200. 300. Looking for 310. 400 BC balls. 500. 1,000 timber line. Or 500 eco. 550? 550. Looking for 600. 600. Dougie. 600. Looking for 625. It's a chair. Remember that. It's for the children. 4,100. 4,100. I don't drink alcohol, Tom. Sorry. 4,100. Once? Twice? So, 4,000 more market. Thank you very much. Hey guys, we're back home after the NARBC show and uh, we're just going to talk about the things that we did and what we got from the show and we'll start first with uh, the NARBC Passport event that went on. Yeah, so the NARBC Passport was, I think this is the first time they've done it, I'm not quite sure. Um, this is the first one that we have been to because this is the closest one to us. But um, Snake Discovery actually partners with US ARC to do um, a passport, which is what what it is, is they partner with 10 different booths that have a stamp. So if you go around and you collect all 10 booths, different stamps, you get a limited edition pin. And so Snake Discovery does their pins for each different event and which, while that is really, really cool, it is a very, very hard to get because people line up for that very early. Yeah. And while I would have loved to have gotten in that line and met them, 
I wanted this pin so bad, so bad, in fact, that I was the very first one yep. to get back to the booth after completing this. Because he was the first finisher. I don't know if that's a bad thing or a good thing, but I got this absolutely beautiful red-sided garter pin. Um, but yeah, I got all 10 booths, which it's just a bunch of different people that are vending at the event. Um, so Adeline Robinson is on here. Vivtech is on here, Zoomed, Josh's Frogs, Cold Blooded Cafe, which you saw earlier in this video, is also on here. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we got to meet some different, some different vendors, and I also got a really cool pin, and I am absolutely in love with it. It's probably, aside from the snakes, my favorite thing that we got. Yeah, and during favorite that, thing. during that race for the pin, in which she was dragging me around mm -hmm. everywhere, we happened to see. A specific hognose running by one of the booths and stopped. You looked at her. You want to tell her? I can tell it. Okay. So, I yes, I'm one of those people where I like I see an animal and I like the animal. I want to buy the animal. Maybe not the best thing in the world, but she just she was gorgeous, and I was like, she's not gonna be here because hognoses are hognoses and everybody wants them. Yeah. And I was like, she's not going to be here if we take a lap. Like we may as well just. Hey, buy her now. I wasn't even finished with my passport. That's how much I wanted her. So Sebastian's like, no, like, let's take a lap. I was like, okay, all right, whatever you say. So we finished the passport and we walked up to like, I think two other vendors, which took us two seconds, by the way. They were both vending hog noses. Two other vendors. We looked at their snakes and we said, let's go. And we ran to this booth, um, which was the Rice Reptiles booth. And we got this absolutely beautiful Arctic Conda girl who is het exanthic and I think 66% het albino. Um, but she is just absolutely gorgeous. She has a beautiful showing of the Arctic gene. Yeah, it's just really, it heightens the contrast. So yes. some people say that it really brightens the whites. Some people say that it makes the blacks around their spots yeah. a lot more stark so that you can see kind of like a, almost like a Sharpie outline mm -hmm. on them. And she's just a beautiful showing of it. And her conda is just such a good expression of the conda. And her head stamp is just, she is just absolutely beautiful. And I am so excited to have her in our collection now and rice reptiles were just super cool to talk to and they were really nice people. Um, as you saw as earlier, you saw in, the earlier in the video. Um, we really like, we just had a great time and I'm very happy to add her. I got yeah. this cool sticker from them. I don't know if that's backwards or not. It's definitely is. If it is, just turn your eyes around. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was our first snake acquire of our NARBC day. Um, so after her, we start, okay, we got one. Because our initial goal was like, we'll get a snake, call it good. Well, we needed a female hognose. We needed one, needed is a strong word, but we wanted one female um, to add to our project. But then we were we started looking for lay boxes because we're it's breeding season. We're trying to get some more professional boxes for our animals to lay their eggs in. And I also tried to look for incubator boxes and I could not find any. So if you are a vendor or someone who knows where to get one, I would love to be pointed in that direction. Maybe but anyways, we were looking for hides and lay boxes. And we found some pretty cool ones. So we got them from, I know they're labeled Wilbanks, but I'm pretty sure we got them from the same place we got the uh, lay boxes from. And I'll show you guys those in a second, but just simple hides that we need, some for the babies that we just got, and then some for our other animals. Um, and then this is a really cool lay box that we got from them. Recoil Reptiles. So it's got the slide open top for your animal to go in. You know, we uh, already put one of these into the box to see if, if, she, if, our, if our girl would like it. Or fit. Or if she would fit, really, because she's kind of thick. But we put the Eco Earth in there. We put some sphagnum moss in there so it's nice and damp and cool and dark. And uh, closed it up. I kind of directed her face into here. She went right in and started digging the dirt out. So hopefully she's comfortable in there. And we got a bigger one for the bull snakes that we are trying to breed as well. We're going to move on. 
And if you know me, you know I love hats. <laughs> Anywhere I go, to any kind of show, snakes, board games, whatever, I try and buy a hat. So, we were just walking through the booths and I laid my eyes on this one. Really cool hat, really cool patterns. I love this little extra flower here on the bill. I like really, you know, what some people might call extra hats, you know? <laughs> but that was something that was really cool. And then we decided, let's go take a look at the Snake Discovery booth, see what the line is looking like. Which, poor Emily, still in line. It was like 4 p.m. and she was still in line. That line did not get any yeah, smaller at all throughout the entire day. There was no line for the merch booth. And so we said, okay, well, let's go pick up some merch. And a little bit of inspiration for me, <laughs> the other half of Snake Discovery, Ed, was there working at the booth. And so I built up the courage, got a hat. <laughs> we didn't even think about getting the hat signed, but on the thing, on the little tag at the bottom where it has the price, it says, Emily can sign this. And I, I'm a big fan of Snake Discovery in general. I take a little bit of inspiration from the cameraman of Snake Discovery, Ed, because I am also typically the cameraman, <laughs> unless Kenzie doesn't want to be in front of the camera then I'm typically the cameraman. So he signed my hat for me and I got a picture with him. It's probably here on the screen. And I was, uh, that was really cool. And so that was me getting two hats. We also got Drama Queen. The Drama Queen hog nose shirt from them. Very cool. I needed to get my hog nose shirt with my Snake Discovery logo. With Snake Discovery, we got a couple stickers. I forgot them in the car. They say heck off. And then the other one is just the logo. So, but those are really cool. We're gonna stick them up in our state in our snake room. But yeah, that's that was the snake discovery haul. While Sebastian was getting that first hat, we walked by Snakeful Grace. And so we actually already have one hog nose from Snakeful Grace. Um, and he's super chill, super cool. Um, so of course. I needed to take a look at all of their other hog noses. This was after we had purchased the first one. And so there was a, uh, we were supposed to be done. So while I'm sitting there and I have two hog noses in my hand at once and I'm staring at Sebastian, begging him for both of them, he says, just get that one. That one is this baby. She is the, well, craziest snake we own. She is the only double recessive visual that we snake have. that we have. Um, she is what is called a toxic um, condo. So she is an exanthic and toffee. Um, so she is showing both of those traits and when they are together they are called toxic. We are actually currently still learning a lot about the toffee gene. Um, it's not one that we have looked a lot into, even though we have, I think, three snakes right now, not including her or the other. That are supposedly toffee. We have, we have snakes that are het toffee. We don't, they were, that was not the main thing we we're going after. They're sables, which is kind of what we're trying to mix into our project. And they happen to be het for toffee. And, uh, you know, we now figured, we, we figured we may as well try and add a little bit of a 10 year project because she is definitely our long term girl. She's got a couple years before she's going to be ready. And then we're going to, it's going to take generations to try and breed them in a way that is not, you know, interbreeding their, their, their siblings or relatives. She is what we are calling our gene bomb because hopefully when she is old enough to breed, um, her babies and we have a sable het toffee male, um, so hopefully they will be friends with each other and we'll be able to make us, um, triple, ge triple genetics Ooh. of sable, exanthic, and toffee. Yeah. So there'll be visual toffee, het sable, het exanthic. Which, the biggest hope from that, it, it would, we're trying to get four visual, a uh, four visual with the condo. Yeah. The biggest thing is that getting those other three would be getting three recessive genes to visualize. Well, on the snake. not not the first gen, but the second gen with her babies. Yeah, which is going to take a while, which is why we're calling her our tenure project. Yeah, but she is just an absolutely beautiful snake. She's one of the most beautiful snakes that we have ever owned. 
And she is so chill and snakeful grace. Yeah, big shout out to them. Amazing, the amazing animal. company to work with. As you saw earlier, they have little setup bins that come with their snakes. Um, and then as we went to pick her up to, you know, leave for the day, I couldn't help but notice that there was another one that I wanted really bad. So I said, okay, I'm getting another one. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> And so this is our third and final snake of our NARBC Dallas. Um, she is a super conda. Um, she's het sable with 66% het toffee belly. She is beautiful. She is a spitfire and I love her already. We also decided it was finally time to buy supplies. Uh, we're trying to build a huge bioactive enclosure for our pair of blue beauty rat snakes that we have They are currently in well the baby is an appropriate sized one The boy is a little too big for what he's in right now. He's in this rack behind yeah. me So temporary enclosure he will be upgrading. We have a four by four by two. Yeah, a four by two by four I don't yeah. really know how to yeah, which uh -huh. is a, it's a good space that we're gonna try to Customize which hopefully you'll see a video on that we're gonna try to customize it to make it as enriching as possible as possible for them. Um, so we got four bags from BioDude of what they recommended would be a good substrate for the type of animal that the Blue Beauty is, which is the terra firma, terra firma, however you pronounce it. It's just a specific mix of soil and other things, other natural things other soils i don't know and this is why we go to the experts and then we got some sphagnum moss to go in that it will be a little bit before we're able to put substrate in there so we didn't get any isopods or springtails yet um just because obviously we don't want them to die yeah, before but that we is the able plan to we'll pick up some um calcium bones and le um, some what is it called leaf litter mm -hmm. some other biodegradables to throw in there once we set it up and we can get isopods and the springtails I also, because we also have some California red sided garters that they just need a little bit more enrichment in their thing because I was horrible and I killed all of their plants because I just... <sighs> I, don't, I don't know what happened. I felt like we watered them enough. Maybe it was I, mean, too much. I think we overwatered them. Um, but I just got this really pretty plant and it is a one that kind of branches out and I think will be really nice for them. Um, so I'm going to stick this guy in there and hopefully it will thrive. We yeah. will not overwater it this time. Um, and yeah, so this is another thing that we got from BioDude that I'm really looking forward to putting in their enclosure. So yeah. yeah. And that's all the stuff that, that we got. That is our haul. Oh, I lied. Oh. I lied. We also got from the auction uh -oh. that we went to after at the end of the day, NARBC has their charity auction at the end of Saturday, which all the proceeds go towards US ARC and making sure that we can continue to do this hobby. Um, I bid on this shirt from Creature Farms. It's got a little isopod on the front and on the back, little isopod cleaning service guy. So I thought it was a really cute shirt. And I, I actually was meant to buy it at the show, <laughs> and we forgot, forgot about, about it. it, and then saw it at the auction and I was like, I'm bidding on that. So I got a, like a $5. Meant to be. Yeah, I got a $5 discount because I won the auction. That was cool. And to go with the enclosure, the custom enclosure stuff that we're going to do, I bid on a big um, custom it's fake, but it's a natural looking, natural feeling boulder that we're gonna put into that other enclosure. And we're just really excited to do that, to finally set up the enclosure for the Blue Beauties, to, we've started the ball rolling on this, on the channel for the snake part of it. We've got our projects going. We, um, we're we feeling really good about where we're at right now and we can't wait to share, you know, the rest of the journey with you guys. So that was everything from the haul, I think. Did I miss mm -hmm. anything? I don't think so. And now we're gonna show you the baby bin setup. Thanks to all the vendors. If you're watching this, thanks again oh. for uh, you know to you guys for letting me do the interviews. I thought that was really cool, and I hope that I really can awesome. do more in the future. Um, and if you guys thought that that was cool, you know, like this video, comment on who you thought uh, was more nervous, me or the vendors, because I could, I felt a little bit, you know, it was my first time, but it was cool anyway. But yeah, like Kenzie said. We're gonna do a, uh, a video of the baby bin setup and here it is.